Hi, it's Chris White, and I want to give a brief tutorial on setting up EdgeRater version 5 to work with HGSI version 8. And HGSI version 8 no longer uses the Quotes Plus database, and so the way to get data into other applications is to export to Metastock format. I'm going to quickly show you how you can do that. And the first thing you would do is bring up your HGSI uh, designer, uh, select the group you want to export, and I'm going to export all the securities from this database, and I will say File export groups. I'll choose a directory location that I want to export to and I'm going to choose uh, just on the root of my C drive metastock data slash all securities. Now it can only put maximum of 6,000 securities per directory and uh, what it will do is after after it's put 6,000 into one directory then it will put the overflow symbols into another directory. So if I click OK here it will go ahead and create my directory structure. Uh, and to save some time I already have that uh, made and what will happen is you'll see a structure such as this with Metastock data as the root, all securities uh, and you can see there were 6,000 odd put into this directory and then the overflow symbols from REXI to ZZC there were about 1800 of these were put into a uh, second sibling folder. Now I've also gone ahead and exported major, major market indexes and the reason I exported that particular group was because one of the new reports within Edge Rater 5 is the US Market Summary Report and it actually requires you to have uh, those symbols available. Uh, and the way you would do that is you just click on Major Market Indexes here. You can see there aren't that many of them. You'd click on, fi again, File, um, Export Groups from the Equus Metastock Utilities and you would then put it into a directory which you would name uh, Major Market Indexes. Okay, and if I click OK here it's just going to create that folder the way that you saw it on my on my hard drive and again I won't do that right now to uh, save time. Even though there's only 13 symbols in there it would actually be very quick. Now, once you have that set up you are good to go. What will have happened is um, when you do your nightly update if you have set, um, let's just bring up the little toolbar here, and if you look at the update option, and you can look at the Metastock options, you have um, set up a bunch of directories which it is going to update when it does its nightly update date. Um, and I don't have that directory, I have uh, all securities, and I'll also add a directory which is the, uh, the, the sibling directory that it created and I can just do that by coming down to my Metastock folder and all securities REXI to ZZC. So there we have the three folders that um, that I'm using and you can put as many as you like in there and uh, and have them updated but because I've got all securities in two of those folders it's pretty much like having a Quotes Plus database now within within Metastock and Metastock provides access to many other applications. Um, it's a pretty much an industry standard way of, of um, accessing data. So we have that all set up. Now all we have to do is go and tell EdgeRater where to get the data. So let's bring up EdgeRater. This is the, the template for the US market summary and you can see that it's using some of the symbols, these new symbols that are in HGSI version 8. And the way that we tell EdgeRater where that data is is we look in the, the Home tab here under Data Providers there's a Metastock provider and you just put in the folder location for uh, the Metastock um, data and you can put the root folder in so I can put in just C um, slash Metastock data and if I click on OK here that is set up um, you'll also notice that I check this off as being the default provider so when you move from from HGSI version 7 which used quotes plus and you, so you previously had this set as quotes, quotes Plus as the default. That is no longer the case. Now you've moved over to, to HGSI version 8. Metastock should be the default provider. And you should point it to the root of the place where you exported the, the data to on the hard drive. So once that's set up, you are good to go. No more setup required. And you should just be able to come into this particular report and click on Run. And what will happen is... Um, you'll see that uh, there's a bunch of uh, 
blanks here because it takes a while for the uh, before there's enough data to start creating some of these figures. And if we come very down to the very bottom of this report, we now see the uh, the highlighting, and all the numbers are actually filled in. Um, and a good way to check that you've got everything correct is to go to the date um, 727, 2011, and there should be a solid red bar. Um, across here. It was, it was quite an important date um, with these market indexes. So uh, everything's looking good there. The report is done. That is pretty much all there is for getting this basic thing set up. We'll talk about more about um, how to export lists in another video, but this should be enough to get you started. Thanks for listening.